Welcome to completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 47. I found the lost die block and fitted it to the engine after slightly shortening the securing bolt. Fitting the crosshead pins in place with the nuts and having a look at the valve timing. Here is the die block, the bolt and the nut that fits it in place. Notice that this is not just a bolt, it has a plain shank as a bearing surface against the die block. I fitted this die block in exactly the same way as I showed in the previous episode, using a bent piece of welding wire to press it into place, followed by fitting the bolt. I have a very small pair of pliers, and these are very useful. They're extremely long nose pliers, great for holding things to get them into the right position. I do have several pairs of surgical calipers, and these are OK, but somehow not quite as good as these pliers. I held the nut in place with the pliers and tightened the bolt with the socket that I machined in the last episode. There was, however, a problem. The bolt itself is not the original bolt that was fitted here, it's one I found in a box, and it's a bit too long, so I need to shorten it. For this I'm going to use my really useful Proxon motor tool, which is fitted into a Proxon bench mount. Altogether, a very good addition to the workshop. These are very small, quick-release cutting discs, and they're extremely useful, very quick to put together, very quick to dismantle. These are part of a Dremel kit that I bought. As you'll see in the next episode, the quick-release drum sanders from the same maker are not so good, but these quick-release cutting discs are excellent. After shortening the bolt, I just rounded the edges to smooth them off. When I stop the cutting disc, you can clearly see the quick release mechanism. It's really well thought out. Now the bolt is the right size, I can refit it to the valve fork and through the die block, because now it doesn't foul the two arms that pull the die block from side to side. Now it's a good time to show you this small box with some metal parts in. I brought these down from the main workshop, and in the next episode I'll be using one of these pieces of brass to make an airline fitting. Back to the job, the flywheel was slipping around the shaft, so using an allen key I tightened it onto the shaft. In this clip I'm fitting the first of the three crosshead pins. And once again my very long and very small pair of pliers does the trick. Persuading the pin to line up with the hole in the crosshead is more difficult than you think. You need a lot of patience for jobs like this, because if you lose your temper and bang things about, you will break them. This is self-defeating because you will only have to make the parts again. Patience, like a lot of other skills, has to be practised. I found this out with my second wife, but in the end I lost the battle. If only she knew how close she came to being sat in my acid bath. Anyway, that is nothing to do with rebuilding a triple expansion engine, so on to the next part. This is the front connecting rod, and I'm about to fit the crosshead pin and the nut to this in exactly the same way as I did with the others, using this special pair of very long nose pliers. Here you can see that I'm levering the pliers against the uprights to press the pin into position. With all three connecting rods actually connected, there is now a problem, I cannot rotate the engine. That's because currently there isn't a hole in the operating arm for the air pump. When I carefully rotate the engine, as soon as the operating arm touches the top of the air pump shaft, it stops dead. I removed the arm, and here I'm marking the position to drill a hole in the middle. At this stage, little did I know how difficult this job was going to be. More about that in the next episode. All I'm doing for now, having removed the arm, is making a felt tip pen mark where I intend to drill a hole later. This job is not the same as the operating arm that fits to the water pump shaft. I may even have to consult the drawing for this part. Here's a quick preview of the drilling job when the drill bit stuck in the hole. For now I'm making sure that all the nuts are fitted to the crosshead pins. The only way I could tighten the nuts on these is to use a small spanner and keep turning it round so I could move the nut a tiny bit at a time. This is in real time and you can actually see it did take a while but I got there in the end without event. Finally, I'm fitting the front connecting rod, and here it is being bolted into position. The good news is, as I've removed the operating arm for the air pump, I can still rotate the engine. Time for a quick 
high-speed oiling session of the moving parts. Then I connect my electric drill to the crankshaft. Initially I'm rotating the parts very slowly and I've just noticed that all the securing bolts are not fitted to the cylinder block so this is going to move around slightly. After running the engine using the electric drill I checked it out. Here's the underside view and everything looks OK. The only part of this engine that has had the timing set correctly, or hopefully correctly, is the centre cylinder. The timing on the high pressure cylinder and the low pressure cylinder is definitely not right. I'd like to show you this. There is a hole in the bottom of the eccentric strap and this allows an allen key to be fed in to tighten the eccentric sheaves which are made in pairs onto the crankshaft. With the bottom part of the eccentric strap removed you can clearly see the allen grub screw. This makes timing adjustment far simpler. I really hope I got the middle cylinder's timing perfect because it's not quite as simple on the middle set of eccentrics. If you are a beginner to the hobby, I definitely do not recommend building a Stuart triple expansion engine as your first project. I am not a machinist and I freely do admit this, and because of that I wouldn't want to make one of these from scratch, there's an awful lot of machining to do. Now it's time to move the engine into the upright position, connect my electric drill to the crankshaft and run the engine at a higher speed. It doesn't sound too bad, but if you look closely at the next image, you will see that the cylinder block is moving around on the upright standards. They definitely need bolting down before the engine is finally finished. But I'm still quite a long way off that yet. And don't forget, the front part of the crosshead is not yet assembled, because that is also the bracket that drives the air pump. By running the engine like this, it is actually freeing up. It felt much better after running it for about 20 minutes with the electric drill, first slowly, then a bit quicker. Running at this speed though, I needed to stop the engine frequently for more oil. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.